one of the solutions we can talk about with our next guest, and that's the social media aspect and how it plays in this problem, especially for children. One recent survey found nearly half of respondents between the ages of 12 and 21 said they have become withdrawn or have self-harmed because they are bullied online about their physical appearance. Four in ten said they are in mental health distress, with about one in five experiencing body image issues. Now Congress and state legislatures are working on a number of pieces of legislation aimed at increasing protections for children on social media. Joining us now, Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, who is introducing the bipartisan Kids Online Safety Act. Bipartisan, that's good. Senator, very good to see you. Hope you're well. Um, good to have you back on the air here. I'm curious um, if this legislation will really have an impact with so many kids at such a young age completely taken over by their phones and by social media. I think it is one of the more promising developments in recent years. It is completely bipartisan. We're introducing it today with nearly 30 co-sponsors, evenly divided, Republican and Democrat. And the reason for this kind of momentum is the realization that the loneliness, depression, despondency, even suicidal thoughts, eating disorders are not by accident driven at children. It is by design. Mm -hmm. The big tech companies are preying on that loneliness because it's part of their business model. More eyeballs means more advertising and more money. And we want to hold the big tech companies accountable, impose a duty of responsibility and care to mitigate those harms about eating disorders and suicidal thoughts, and also give young people the tools they need to disconnect from right. those addictive features. In fact, make disabling the addictive features the default, not the practice. I completely agree with this, but I just don't know how it works. I mean, how, how do you put the toothpaste back in the tube? You know, kids find a way to these social media, uh, you know, they, they do it at younger ages. They get around all the rules that are there. And it's such a part of the fabric of everyday life for young people. So how does this work? How do you hold these companies accountable on exactly what you're talking about? If a company knows or has reason to know that it is driving toxic content at children through the black box algorithms, if it in fact does it, then it can be held responsible legally. And I've met grieving parents who've lost kids who are clamoring for this kind of tool or responsibility on the part of big tech. And I've met kids just last week in Hartford, sixth graders, who want the options to disconnect from the kind of content relating to bullying or eating disorders. And we would give them mandatorily under the law those options to disconnect from the addictive features. So I think that young people want control back over their online lives. Parents want tools to help their kids. We don't want to shut them out. We want to empower them and give them back control. So I think it is doable. And of course, the big tech companies will oppose it with armies of lawyers and lobbyists. There's no question we will have a fight, but those parents who have mm. come to Washington to lobby in favor of it, and the kids that we will bring here to talk to our colleagues, I think can carry the day. Senator, good morning. For all the reasons you just laid out, there has been in recent weeks talk of a national ban on TikTok, which has 150 million users in the United States alone, incredibly popular among young people as well as you know, not just for that side of it, but because of the role the Chinese government plays in that company. Is that still on the board? Do you believe there might still be a ban on TikTok? There may still be a ban on TikTok, in part because of the surveillance dangers, the Chinese potentially collecting large amounts of information. And there is that danger, by the way, in many of these social media accounts as well, because they can collect 
information through age verification program. But I think the more fundamental and profound question about TikTok, about Facebook, about Google, that we really revealed in this series of hearings that we held. We've been working on this measure for three whole years, and we have really done a lot of diligent work to try to pinpoint and target the specific harms relating to aggravating those feelings of despondency and loneliness. The ban on TikTok doesn't solve that problem. It's much broader, more profound. That's what our legislation seeks to address. Senator Richard Blumenthal, thank you very much for being on the show this morning. We appreciate it.